Peace be still. Hello, viewer. Welcome one more time and again and again to this program, Peace Be Still. As usual, my name is Steve Ngolo. And I want us to talk about the man of cross, Jesus Christ. Now, this man, Jesus, is the one that we love and we adore. And we love him because he taught us how to love. God the Father sent his son, the Bible says, his only begotten son to come and die for you and me. What manner of love is that? That God saw it and counted it upon us to send his son Jesus Christ to come and die for us. That is the love of Christ that is manifested in us. And this is Christ who looks and walks with us in all storms and he says, peace be still in whichever situation you are in. Today, dear viewer, I still want to reflect upon the word of God in the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. This is a passage where Jesus calmed the storm in the Sea of Galilee. And today I want us to reflect on something. That there are storms of life that sometimes will hit us the wrong way. And these storms, we can only overcome them when we have faith in God. Now faith in God, we can only build it if we know who God is and if we welcome God in our situations. And walk with the disciples in the sea of Galilee inside that ship. At one point, Christ questioned their faith, yet they met crisis. And when they met crisis, they would have stopped it if they had faith in the Lord. The Bible says that even if you have faith as small as mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain to move from point A to point B. And so Christ is questioning the disciples. If you look at the book of Mark chapter 4, verse, 30, verse 40, it says, but he said to them, this is Christ speaking to the disciples, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And so, dear viewer, sometimes storms will hit us from side to side, but the Lord wants us to exhibit faith in him and just believe in him. And one of the areas where we have storms hitting us is our marital lives or our marriages. And how will we say peace be still when we are in crisis in our marriage? How will we talk it to our partner and the solution is in the word of God. Christ is speaking to us. He's saying in whichever situation, when we call upon him, he will say, peace be still. And so today, allow me to talk about what we can do when storms of life hit our marriages. Shall we pray? God our Father, marriage is something that you designed in the Garden of Eden. We have lived to enjoy it, but to others, it has left bitter taste in their mouths. Today, Lord, as we learn together, we pray that you may reconcile us first to you, then to our partners. We pray that you may teach us to love you, for we know that when we love you, dear Lord, we will be able to love our spouses. Be with us. Teach us what we can do when we are amidst storms in our marriages. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear viewer, Jesus, before crucifixion, said something in the book of John chapter 16, 33, said, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. Uh -huh. In Christ we may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulations. Mm -hmm. So his tribulations promise to us 
Yes, in the world, the word of God says that in the world we will have tribulations. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Christ wants us to develop a character like himself. That as much as there will be tribulations in the world, he has overcome. And he is our master plan. And so if Christ overcame, then we too, we are overcomers. And therefore, even in our marital lives, if you are married, you know very well that there are additional challenges. We struggle with so many things. We struggle with marital disagreements. We struggle with financial disagreements. We struggle with in-laws who are proving to be so difficult in our marriages. We struggle with maybe our parents who are aging. We struggle with bringing up the children. We struggle with so, so many things. But again, Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 28, that those who marry will face many troubles in this life. And these are some of the things that we must just know. That in this life, there are problems that we will face. But back to the word of God, or what Jesus said in the book of Matthew, uh, book of John chapter 16, verse 33, that take heart, I have overcome the world. And so where we are, we will always overcome. Allow me to tell you this, that marriage is one great gift in our lives. I can stand and confess that that is the best thing that ever happened in my life. But as much as it happened, this gift also comes with share or fair share of its own challenges. Sometimes a week, a month, in a year, a problem will always occur. Even sicknesses are problems that sometimes tends to pull partners apart. What is it that you're struggling with? in your marriage. I just want to encourage you that all these are the storms that sometimes we face, but there is a sure word from Christ. He looks at us, when we call upon him, he will stand and say, peace be still in your marriage. Peace be still in the conflicts we are undergoing. And therefore, dear viewer, allow me to tell you, to bring you the good news today, that God loves marriages so much and he's got a great news for our marriages in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12. It says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. It continues, if either of them falls down, one can help. But Pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Dear viewer, there is an assurance from the word of God. And God has got good news for us in our marriages that whatever conflict or storms that may hit us, left, right, and center, there is a sure word from him. He says, I love marriages so much because if you are two, then you are better than one. He says, I love marriages so much because when you are two, you have good return for your labor. God speaks to us and he says, I love marriages so much because when you are two and one falls down, the other can help the other up. And he says that he pities anyone who falls and has got no one to help them. Dear viewer, the only person who can help you rise is your partner. Because your partner is your friend. And again Solomon says, the book of Proverbs, that a knife sharpens a knife. So friends should always sharpen themselves. And therefore, where you are, the storms of life when they come, it only requires best friends to wage through. 
And you can only do that when you sharpen each other and when you have each other's back and when you are working together, when you're speaking the same language. And so today, allow me to share with you some few suggestions on what we can do or how we can face the storms that may hit us in our marriages. Number one, acknowledge that life will always have challenges. Dear viewer, we are on the planet Earth. One thing that you have to acknowledge for a peace of mind is that life will always have challenges. The book of um, James chapter 1 verse 2 says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. What is James saying? James is trying to tell us that we will always meet trials, we will always meet temptations. In our marriages, we'll always have conflicts. And when we have them, what do we do? Count it all joy. How do we count it all joy? By recognizing or acknowledging that challenges are there. If we own the challenge, if we acknowledge that it exists, then we'll be able to control or to come up with a solution, the two of us. Remember, if there is a problem between the partners, I've learned that the solution can only come between the partners. Meaning, I cannot come with a solution myself. But we have to sit down with my wife so that we talk and agree and come up with a solution that will last forever and ever in our marriage. When do this happen? When we acknowledge that indeed there are challenges. And so we are called to walk these seasons of conflict, seasons of storms with joy. If we walk with joy, then we will experience peace in our hearts and peace in our minds. We will experience the joy and forgiveness through Christ Jesus, even when we are deep inside these storms. Look at the disciples when they were in the vessel. They experienced the joy of walking with Jesus. They had lost hope, but when they called upon him, Christ stood and said, peace be still, and there was joy all over their face one more time. And so in the storm, let us learn to walk with joy, just like James is advising us today. The second suggestion, what we can do when we face storms beating our marriage uh, together, we can recognize the real enemy. Who is the enemy? Satan is an enemy to marriages. So many marriages, Satan is not happy with. And when that happens, if we don't know who this enemy is, then we may think that we are the enemies ourselves. Often when a crisis befalls us, couples will begin to view each other as the source of the problem. Why don't we do this? Why can't you view yourself as the source of the problem and so call your partner for a solution? Yes, some of these things are difficult to do because anyway, we are human beings and sometimes we feel that we have an ego. But the word of God says that we should not view each other as the problem or the cause of the storm. The truth is that Satan will always desire and want to divide you from your spouse because he hates marriages, like I'd said. He hates marriages and he can do everything to cause enmity between you. And Christ talks to us in the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. The Bible says, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. It continues, and no city, no house, let me add this, no marriage divided against itself will stand. And so when we want to blame each other, we will not stand. We will not beat the common enemy. And so the very first thing we need, the second thing we need to do is to recognize the real enemy in our marriage. I know that the real enemy is Satan. Sometimes Satan may come and camouflage in your partner. Christ looks at Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. Peter was not the Satan. He was not seeing Peter as a Satan, but he knew that what was speaking through Peter at that particular time was the voice of Satan. And so we should always pray earnestly so that whenever these conflicts occur, or even before they occur, we should keep Satan at bay and know that he is the real enemy that will always want to disintegrate us in our beautiful marriages. The third suggestion, the first one I said, acknowledge that life will always have challenges. The second one I said, 
recognize the real enemy to this marriage. And the third one now, turn toward God and trust him. Dear viewer, when we are faced with conflicts in our marriages, the Bible instructs us to turn to God and to turn to him and trust him for a solution. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6, the Bible says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. That is the God that we have. Moses is speaking to the Israelites and he's telling them, Hey, you Israelites, be strong, be courageous. The same is repeated to Joshua through the voice of God. Tells him in Joshua chapter 1 verse 6 that Joshua be strong and be courageous for I am with you. And that is what God is speaking to us today. That amidst the storm there is a promise. What is his promise to us? His promise is that we be strong and we remain courageous and we do not fear or be in dread of anyone who attacks our marriages. For it is the Lord our God who goes with us. Before you settled in that marriage, the Lord went before you. And that is why he allowed you to settle in that marriage. And so whichever storm that comes, the Lord knows that the cord that you have, the two of you, cannot be broken by a single storm. And so when Satan approaches, the Lord knows the power that is given you to defend yourselves. And so he's saying that he is going before us. He will not leave you or forsake you. What a great promise today, that whatever we are undergoing, whatever we are going through, the Lord has promised to stay with us. He is not going to leave us. When there is sickness in our family, the Lord is already present with a solution. But anyway, he knew us even before we were born. He knew our ending even before our beginning. Who are we to question God? He has promised that he's going to be with us and therefore he's right with us. He's, he's with us right there in that storm. Dear viewer, allow me to encourage you today that do not leave this Jesus away whenever storm strikes. Sometimes he can be sleeping in the boat. He can be silent. But again when he's silent, that is when we need to approach him even more. That is when we need to seek him even more so that Christ may wake up Stand up in our marriages and say, peace be still. How I pray today that the Lord may speak in this still voice. Peace be still in whatever you are going through. And in any case, if anything is planning to be in your way, the Lord is already there. He has encouraged us today in the book of Deuteronomy that it is him who goes with us. He will not leave us or forsake us. That is God Almighty. Allow me to move to my fourth point. Keep your heart open and don't lose hope. Dear viewer, whenever there is a problem in our marriages, whenever storms of life hit our marriages, the Lord is speaking to us today and is telling us that we should keep our hearts open and we don't lose hope. Let us keep our hope in him because he's God. And our God never changes. And that is what he's telling us and advising us today, that we should not harden our hearts. And by the way, Christ, when talking to the Pharisees in the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 8, says, he said to them, because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And so divorce is not godly. God does not approve divorce anyway. And Christ is telling the, the, the Pharisees in this excerpt that, hey, divorce was allowed by Moses during that time, but there was a reason for allowing it. The reason was because of your hardness of heart. When there is hardness of heart in our marriage or in me or in you as a spouse, then there are things that will occur which will not occur. The things that will occur when we have, when we are keeping a hardened heart are things which are now satanic. 
Because God does not approve of a hard heart. A heart does th that does not listen. A heart that does not care. A heart that always wants to be proud and to put itself in front before the other. That is the heart that God disapproves. And mo uh, Christ tells them that, hey, because of your hardened heart, Moses allowed you to divorce. Dear viewer, it is my encouragement or my advice today, or my suggestion today, that we should keep our hearts open without losing hope. When we keep our hearts open, then the Lord himself will always come to dine with us. The Lord himself will always have an opportunity to turn our hearts to love him. And like we've mentioned earlier, if we love God, then we'll always learn and know how to love our spouse. Without loving God, we cannot love our spouse. Why? The Bible says that if we don't love this spouse that we are with every day, how can we say that we love God that we have never seen? And is it true that we've never seen God? No. We see God in all our situations. We see God in this marriage that he has given us. We see God in our children if he has blessed us with children. We see God in nature. We see God in our surrounding. And when we see him, the Lord, all that he requires from us is to keep an open heart so that he may always come and talk to us. That whenever there is a storm in our lives, in our marriages, he'll always have an opportunity to come in and say, hey, Steve, turn your heart and this is the right direction. Nothing feels good like when your partner forgives you. Nothing feels good like when you open your heart and speak to your partner and tell her or him all the truth and all that disturbs you. And therefore, I want to give you a suggestion today that whenever there is storms in life, let us keep our hearts open. Let us evaluate ourselves and know where we are moving. Lastly, dear viewer, whenever these storms occur in our marriages, we should surround ourselves with faithful community of believers and role model couples. This is one thing that we should be doing. No one can exist as an island, dear viewer. You can have friends, but these friends, you must have real friends. You must have true friends. You must have friends who are ready to stab you with truth. You must have friends who are ready to sharpen you. These are the friends that you need in your marriage. Friends will tell you that, hey, this is wrong. Hey, this is right. Friends that you can confide in if solution cannot be gotten amongst you. Yes, there are instances when a couple can have so big a conflict that you feel you are not making headways. These are the instances that will require you to seek for a second opinion. Christ advises that if someone wrongs you, talk to him. If this person does not change, then you can bring in the second person. If still there is no change, then you can now go to the community of believers. How I pray that in the conflicts within our marriages, we're always reaching out to God directly and reaching out to our partners, for there is the secret to the solution to the storms that are hitting us in our marriages. Dear viewer, Christ did not promise us smooth life. Dear viewer, you have to acknowledge that there are problems everywhere and you must acknowledge that your marriage is unique in its own. And if that is so, then its uniqueness will always give you a unique way of solving these problems. Christ stood up in the boat and said, peace be still. And he said to the disciples, hey, you, the disciples, how come your faith is so little? How I pray today that one couple who is watching me today will have an answer to Christ when he asks, why is your faith so little? You'll say, Lord, we are here. We have a solution to this storm that is hitting our marriages. May God bless you, dear viewer. Till next time, this is the program, Peace Be Still. Watch out for the next episode. And for now, there are so many programs lined up for you in Hope Channel, Kenya. Enjoy the viewing today. My name is Steve. Shall we pray? God our Father, 
we have spoken as friends. And Lord, we have acknowledged that there are problems sometimes that hit us in our marriages. We pray that Lord, we may acknowledge that you are king of our lives and king of our marriages. Allow us always to have a solution and to call upon you so that you may stand and say, peace be still, my son, my daughter. May your blessings be upon us for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.